Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I thank God for this opportunity to bring God's truth to you today. Now, it's a new week, and this is the last week of the month of September, meaning by Saturday we're stepping into the month of October. Why we bless the Lord for a wonderful month, September. You remember the Lord taught us, David said, teach us to number our days. Teach us to number our days. Now, what does it mean to number our days? Not to say count the days, one, two, three. It means learn to take advantage of every day. Now, that also means every season. Make it meaningful. And you see, that's why I always share, don't spend time doing the wrong things. Don't spend time doing things that do not have eternal value. I know lots of thoughts will go through your mind, especially as the month is coming to an end. But this week I'm going to be sharing a few thoughts with us from the Lord that will help you keep your mind stable and cause you to excel as you apply these things. But before going to today's broadcast, can we make demands for our daily bread? Join me right now as we declare, say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the coming seasons are seasons that these things I'm sharing with you will become very important. This is the reason we record these things and we put it up there on YouTube. So at your own time, you can go look for these titles and begin to listen and listen and watch and watch until the Lord opens your mind. I'm aware you cannot understand the things of God by yourself. The knowledge is given to you. And according to Jesus, there are some people, it is not given to them. It, do, it, doesn't have, it doesn't matter how much you try to make them understand, they cannot see it. The reason is because sight comes from the Lord. And those the Lord has not given sight to, there is no way they can see. But Jesus one day said to the disciples, and he's saying to you the same thing, blessed are your eyes for they see. Jesus wept over Jerusalem and he said, Oh, if only you have known the time of your visitation. Now Jesus was there with them. Their time of visitation had come, but God will not force the visitation on you. He will let you see. He will make you see the signs. But the interpretation of those signs are purely up to you. Because your interpretation will determine how much you commit to it. A man can meet his deliverer and not know that his deliverer is standing right before him. Even though the deliverer is making suggestions to deliver him. A man can stand in front of one who has been sent to save him from a situation and yet he will not understand because his eyes were not open to see. My prayer for you today is that in all things, the Lord will give you sight that you can see, that you can hear and that your heart will understand the right things and that you will see in God's perspective Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. It takes the pure in heart to see God. 
Seeing God doesn't mean you will see God standing in your bedroom. Or you will see visions of heaven and you will see God standing or sitting on his throne. No, sir. Seeing God means see God's perspective of everything. If your heart is pure, and that tells me that those who don't see God's perspective in everything, their hearts are blinded. Blinded with what? Impurities. There is no man that is blind in this world. Hear me? Everybody sees. It just matters what you see. Those who are who we call physically blind, not because they are blind really, it's just that they see darkness. They see darkness. But their minds are still active, so they still see. That's why a man who's physically blind can be telling you visions of God's spirit. That's why a man who has never read the Bible before, blind from birth, can still be telling you things and experiences about God. And you'll be checking your Bible and confirming that those things are true. How? Because he's seen. He's seen. Many, are, their eyes are physically opened. But really, they are blind. Because all they see is darkness. All they see is the wrong stuff. And what you see will affect what you say. And Jesus said, you shall have whatsoever you say. We don't just wake up and speak. We respond to the things that we see. So you want to know what a man is seeing. Hear what he's saying. You can tell what he's saying. Everything about your life is according to sight. From your sight, you will speak. Praise God. So what use is your physical eyes when your mind is blind? It means your interpretation will mostly be wrong. This is the reason Satan is so interested in filling the world with darkness. That's the whole purpose. Because with the darkness in the world, he will give you sight. And by your sight, you will begin to speak. And the way to restore light in the world is not by spending all night praying that the darkness should go away, but rather that we'll begin to check what we see. We'll begin to check how we see. Remember, Isaiah tells us that the Lord shall arise upon thee. He will arise upon you. What is he arising upon you for? To give you sight. By the things the Lord says to you, you will see sight. That's the reason before God does anything, the Bible says God will do nothing until he first of all reveals it to his servant, the prophet. What do you think is the purpose of that? To give him sight first. And from the sight, he will begin to speak. There are many, if you look at the, the economy of the world, you don't need a prophet to tell you that doomsday is coming. Everything seems to be crashing down. Doomsday is coming. But the question is, you as a child of God, when you hear the news, when you hear all those postulations, what comes to your mind? Do you see God's perspective? Do you remember that, oh, the word of God says, or the Bible says, saviors shall arise out of Mount Zion. Did you see the scripture says, upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. Did you see that the scripture says, the glory of God shall be seen upon thee. Did you see that the scripture says, the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. Have you seen that? So when they start telling you, look, 
there's going to be food crisis in the coming days, some serious food crisis. When they start telling you those things, do you panic? Do you start running helter-skelter? Or do you see from God's perspective? The world is already in darkness, so you don't expect anything good. You don't expect things to get better. Everything that seems to get better in the world leads to further darkness. That's how it's been. That's just how it's been. Life is structured in that way. The lesser the complications, the lesser the trouble. But then as the world is advancing, things are getting more complicated. And because things are getting more complicated, think about it. There were times, there were, there were, there were days or period in your life, you never had a mobile phone. And since you didn't have a mobile phone, you still stored information. You still had communications. You still did all the things that you wanted to do. You never thought you were missing anything. And then we advanced. And now we have mobile phones. It now appears that we can reach everybody we want to reach, no matter where they are. It looks good. Oh, we can store all our information on our phones in a cloud somewhere. It looks wonderful. But then, your phone battery dies and you couldn't charge it for just one day and your whole life becomes scattered. Some people can never operate. Why? So, you see, the more the world gets complicated, the more um, it creates troubles also. The troubles become in a bigger magnitude. But then when you see from God's perspective, your life will be different. The reason is this. Jesus said the Holy Ghost will always show you things to come. There is nothing, there is nothing that is going to happen in this world that God will not prepare his children for. There is nothing. So the question you need to ask yourself is, am I a child of God? How do you know you're a child of God? you hear your father's voice. It's as simple as that. There is no other definition to give. There is no other perfect definition to give. That's the only definition. Who is a child of God? A child of God is simply the one who hears the voice of the father. Every attachment they want to give to that definition, this is the pure definition. If we all stand here and our father speaks, those who hear his voice are the ones that are his children and they will respond to their father's voice. That's why Jesus said concerning what, um, what we describe as the rapture. He was describing, it says, two people shall be in one place, in the farm or in the field. One shall be taken and the other one left. How will he be taken? He will hear a voice. He will hear the father calling. And as he hears the father calling, he responds. The other one was not taken because he didn't hear the father's voice. So the question you need to ask yourself sincerely is, am I a child of God? Am I led by the Spirit of God? How can I prove I'm led by the Spirit of God? Or are you being led by a pastor? Are you being led by a prophet? All you know about God is what your pastor has taught you. Hear me, the seasons that that will not work is before us. Because it will get to the point you will begin to doubt even what your pastor have taught you. So if you don't know truth for yourself, if you don't hear God for yourself, if the Holy Spirit is not your personal teacher, of course it's important to have teachers, have pastors, to have those that, are, that know or that have experienced God more than you, or even like you, because we share fellowship together. And we share these things with the understanding that there is God who teaches us individually. So when we share together, we share our testimonies. That's why I tell you, there is no point listening to a man who doesn't have personal testimony of the things he's teaching. 
he might not help you much. He will be like a teacher that will finish teaching you and pray you don't ask questions. Because he has crammed what he's teaching you. So when you begin to ask questions, you will have to pull out from knowledge that he doesn't have. So a child of God without the experience of what he is teaching has that problem also. That's why don't stop at what you're told from the pulpit. Don't even stop at what I'm telling you. Go further. Dig deeper. Hear God for yourself. Take these teachings to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm he just hearing this. What do you say about this? Allow him to teach you. When he begins to teach you, number one, light will fill your heart. Number two, it will build conviction in you. No man can turn you away from what God teaches you himself. And number three, everything God teaches you himself, there is going to be an abundance of supply of his spirit in that direction to manifest that word he has taught you. When you act in obedience, I remember teaching last week and I made a statement. I said, I can never be broke. My children can never be broke. This is not because we have a lot of money stored up somewhere and we've gauged it and say, look, even if we spend a million naira a day, it will take us maybe another hundred years to finish it. That's not what we're talking about. Even though that is true. What do you mean it is true? Oh, we have money stored up in our heavenly bank accounts. The money is eternal. I'm telling the truth. The wealth is eternal. Now all God did, and this is the same truth for every believer. You have a heavenly account. You do have it. The question is, do you operate it? That's the question you ask. Do you operate it? We are called joint heirs with Christ. That means everything Christ owns, we own. So, when I made that statement, I made that statement because we have learned things from the Spirit of God. What did we learn? How to operate that account. And Jesus said that account never runs dry. Thieves don't affect it. Inflation can't affect it. The price of food in the world can never affect that account. So it doesn't matter how inflation, how high the inflation rises. We will just pull out what we need for the time and get things done for ourselves. So hear me. God's children, you will never go down. You will never go down. You will never go down. The things you hear about the world is for the people of the world. But your own message comes from your father. And as you open your heart and release your faith to the things he will teach you, your days will keep getting better and better. Even in the season of great darkness, your light will still be shining. I pray for you today that as this month is coming to an end this week, I pray that your eyesight is sharpened by the Spirit of God. Every dullness in your sight leaves. And I pray that the Lord establishes your hearing and fill you with his wisdom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.